The other con is, depending on where your council property is located, the actual market value, even with the discount the council applies, may still make it too expensive. So you have to think about what kind of area is your council property in? Because let's be honest, a lot of the areas we grew up in that maybe we perhaps may not see as completely glamorous, they're getting very gentrified now, property values going up, you know, there's been a lot of kind of like new developments, etc. So a lot of us are getting priced out of places that we've grown up in. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome to the family. And if you've been engaging with my content, you already know, real MVPs. Thank you so much. Um, and yeah, please make sure you like, comment and subscribe. Um, for those of you who follow me on Instagram, I spoke about completing on my first property. I mentioned that it was an ex-council property. I wanted to kind of in this video focus on the pros and cons um, of buying an ex-council property. I'm about to get really real with you guys um, because I feel like, I think with home ownership in general, I just feel like it's very glamorized. I feel like it's something that, you know, we've, we're in this era now, you post a picture of your keys and I bought a home at this age. And it's something that whilst I believe it's definitely something great to aspire towards, I mean, generational wealth and all that good stuff. I'm so here for it, of course, as to why I've done it. But I do think that, I don't think there's a lot that people actually kind of really open up about in terms of kind of taking that step to home ownership. So the pros and cons I wanna talk about are gonna be pros and cons of obviously buying a council property specifically, but I will also kind of go into kind of pros and cons of home ownership in general. So um, let's start with the cons. I feel like sometimes it's just good to just get straight into some the somewhat negative side and then we can pick it up with the positive. So let's start with the cons. So I would say the first con of buying your council property and I mean, it depends on how you look at this. Some might not look at this as a con, some might look at this as a pro. But for me personally, I look, saw it as a con. And it's simply that you have to wait three years before you are eligible to buy it. And within that three year period, you aren't actually able to get confirmation of whether you are actually eligible. So you could wait three years, live in the property, wait, you know, save, do whatever, and get to the three years, apply for your right to buy and they say no you can't buy it so again like I mean for some people that might be a positive because it could give you time to save etc and you know you kind of have time to prepare but for me I saw it as a bit of a con because one I wasn't sure if I was able to buy this property because of sort of where it's located and stuff like that I just wasn't sure if it would be an option also I wanted to get on the property ladder a lot sooner than I did and don't get me wrong I don't you know I, I feel like it's still a fantastic achievement regardless of whether I waited it actually took me four years technically because um I started the process last year June and only completed this year June so it actually took me four years um but I very early on way before that had wanted to get on the property ladder and I felt like it was something that whilst I knew it was a great opportunity and it made sense to wait I did kind of feel like it was just like a goal that was just kind of, I don't want to say delayed, but you know when you kind of have some certain things in your head that you want to do by a certain point and you can't, like you just have to kind of just wait it out. But I ended up flipping that con on its head by saying, okay, cool, I've given myself extra time to save, you know, I, yeah, just mostly around just being able to save more money within that time. And also the fact that the investment opportunity that came with this property was really, really great. So I thought, yeah, you know what, as much as it feels like a con, it can be a pro. But I would say mm -hmm. still put it as a con because not everybody wants to wait that long. The other con is, depending on where your council property is located, the actual market value, even with the discount the council applies, may still make it too expensive. So you have to think about what kind of area is your council property in? Because let's be honest, a lot of the areas we grew up in that maybe we perhaps may not see as completely glamorous, they're getting very gentrified now, property values going up, you know, there's been a lot of kind of like new developments, etc. So a lot of us are getting priced out of places that we've grown up in. Um, and I'll be honest, even you know, with the discount, my property was still not necessarily the cheapest for what it is. It is just a one bed. Um, so 
thinking of how much I paid for it, I could have probably got a house outside of London, two, three bedrooms, etc. Um, so I would say that is a con because a lot of people might assume that just because it's a council property, it's going to be cheap and that, oh, on top of that, they're getting a discount. So it's naturally going to be affordable. But if that was the case, everyone would be buying their council properties. The truth is not everybody can afford it. It depends on your affordability assessment and your earnings. You might even still, after the discount, still not be able to afford it. So yeah, I would say like, have a look at, you know, previous sold properties within your area or if you've got other um, properties within the area that have been sold and they're ex-council properties, it should give you an indication of roughly what it could cost um, or what the council may value it as and see if that's something that actually falls within your affordability because you might find that actually the council flat isn't affordable, but you, maybe you could afford to buy something somewhere else. So you might miss out on that discount, but you probably get a better deal elsewhere. The other con is kind of sort of around affordability as well is that with council properties, there is something called major works. So major works take place pretty much at any time. And it is around the kind of redevelopment of the property, whether it's a roof that needs fixing or a lift that needs fixing or just general kind of a facelift of the block. If you live in a block, for example, um, you know, maybe something they're doing to the car park. Basically, any work that take place to the property as a leaseholder, which is what you'll become when you buy it, if you're buying council flat, not council house, you have to pay towards any of that. Um, so when you are kind of getting, when the council give you an offer of how much they're selling it to you, they have to tell you how much major works you're going to potentially have to pay over the next five years. And that in itself, that major works could price you out of being able to even buy the property. So your mortgage lender might be able to afford, might be able to lend you a certain amount. But by the time you now add major work costs to your affordability assessment, you might not be able to afford the mortgage lender might say you might not be able to afford it. So again, the major works can sometimes be very unattractive and they can sometimes bring you over whatever it is that you're supposed to be able to afford to pay. So that can in itself be a con. Also, thinking about the major works, um, this is something that, like I said, they can give you an estimate of what you have to pay within five years. It could be something that's payable on completion or it could be something that you have to later pay for. So you have to budget ahead and think, realistically can I afford the perhaps 10 20,000 etc that I'm being quoted in the next five years even if it's something that they let you pay in installments so it's all of those extra additional costs to factor in and also um, in my case because I bought a flat I have to consider service charge so that's like a weekly a weekly yearly fee that can be paid quarterly or monthly or yearly um, so there's all these like little additional costs to think about. But again, these aren't always isolated to council properties, because if you buy a flat on the open market that's not a council property, you'd probably still have to pay things like service charge and ground rent and potentially contribute towards the works of the property as well. So, yeah, um, it's definitely something to bear in mind. More so when you're thinking about a council flat, I think, is when it probably more is applicable. But it's still something that, again, can make it not so favourable once you've kind of added up everything and done all, the, done all the maths. Another con, which, again, is not entirely specific to council properties, but as somebody that has lived in a council property for the best part of four years and now moved on to owning it, one thing that I've drawn out as a con is now everything is now my responsibility. So gone are the days where I could be like, oh, there's a little something, a little chip on the wall. Let me call the council. Let's get them in to sort it out. Not anymore. Every little thing is you on you. Um, you have to pay for everything. So plumbing, like I used to enjoy just like calling the council to come sort out my toilet, my kitchen sink. Um, you know, anything that was just for them to come and sort it out. Whereas now everything is on me. The other day I saw that my toilet was leaking and I called them and they were like, sis, um, it's no longer our responsibility. But you have to also adjust to the idea that you no longer have that privilege of the council being responsible for absolutely anything that goes wrong in your property. You are entirely responsible for everything, plumbing, gas, boiler, you name it, it's yours, your responsibility. The only things that the council is still responsible for are anything to do with the actual building because they obviously still own the building, you just own your flat. So anything kind of external or anything like pipe work or anything that is external that kind of connects to you, they're still responsible for all of that sort of stuff. But everything else guys 
it is all on your dime. So yeah, I would say um, if you are considering buying your council property to make sure that if there is any defects, if there's anything that they need to fix, whether that be like, like I said, I've had, I had plumbing issues pretty much like for years, um, you know, anything like that, that you know is going to cost you a bit of money get them to sort it out before you even put your application forward because there's a period of time when the council accepts your offer, sorry, no, when the council accepts that you want to buy the property and they've said, yes, you can buy it, you aren't eligible to that anymore. Like you aren't eligible for them to come and help you with things. So that process actually starts from quite early on. So I would say before you even put your application in, make sure you've gone around your property, every nook and cranny, anything that you know they need to do, make sure they come and do it so that it doesn't come out of your mind. Another con is that I can't, I would say in pretty much all of the cases, but there could be someone out there that's not in this position. And if that's the case, feel free to comment and let me know. But I would say in majority of cases, your mortgage is always going to be more than what you pay in rent. So if you've been very used to be paying a subsidized amount of rent, like I have been, to then jump from that to whatever your mortgage payments are going to be, it can be quite can be a little painful you know it, it can hurt a bit it can sting because you've been used to paying a certain amount now whilst obviously I'm okay to pay that because one it's affordable for me two I know it's a good investment so I know it's worth it but still like your expenses basically go up um, and you have to make sure that you are in a position financially to be able to manage that and you know I suppose you don't have as much flexibility with your mortgage payments as you do with your rent. I mean, I've never missed any of my rent payments, but I feel like if I was ever in a situation where I did miss a rent payment, they would work with me to kind of create like some kind of a payment plan or anything like that. I don't feel like the repercussions would be as bad or it wouldn't take as long as opposed to um, with your mortgage, you're missing a payment. First of all, you don't want to miss mortgage payment on your credit file. Second of all, I don't even know how long it would take for them to repossess the property or whatever. Um, whereas with your, you know, with rent, there's kind of avenues that they have to take before it even gets to a point where they're even considering evicting you or taking you to court, etc. You get a bit more leeway, I would say. Whereas with your mortgage, it's like, you no, know, there's no playing games, like you can't be missing them payments. So that can come with an increased amount of pressure, I would say, because you kind of think to yourself, I always need to be employed. Like I always need to have money. I always need to be earning. I always need to have either an, an emergency fund or I need to make sure that no matter what, I have to make those payments every month. And don't get me wrong, I had the same attitude with my rent. So it's kind of no different. It's just that the amount is different. So yeah, I would say the only reason I put that as a con is because again, that's not going to be favorable to everybody. Some people, they, you know, can afford their lifestyle just about with the amount that they're paying in rent. So to then come and ask them to pay more on top, even if they did meet the affordability assessment, it might not be the most favorable option. So yeah, that can be sort of a con as well. And just that kind of mental feeling of knowing that, listen, it doesn't matter. Every month, you have to make this, but like, I feel, I feel almost, I'm, I mean, I am bound to it for the next 25 years or whatever. I'm actually bound to it. So I don't know. For me, there was just like a sense of pressure that came with that, like a sense of commitment that I was just like, oh my God, like I always have to make sure that I have this money every month. Whereas I didn't have that before because there wasn't really anything apart from my rent, really. There wasn't anything else. I mean, I didn't really have many outgoings. So now I just have this sense of, I don't know. It's just a certain pressure. Some people won't agree that this is a con, but I think you have to mentally prepare yourself for that, especially if you're someone that, for, because usually it's the opposite. Usually people are paying more in rent and they get a mortgage and then that reduces that amount that they're paying in rent. And actually they're in a financially better position when it comes to how much money they're saving. Whereas it's done the complete opposite for me because obviously I was not paying too much in rent and I was able to save quite a bit. Now I'm paying more because of my mortgage and yeah, I'm not able to save as much as what I did. So for me, that's a con, but I can appreciate that's not going to be a con for everyone. And the other con I would say is, and again, this is my personal opinion of what, of a con, for some it might not be, is because I was already living in the property, I didn't get that same, I suppose, rush that everybody would get when they buy their first property because I was already in it. So I didn't really feel that excitement of, you know, going to pick up my keys and, you know, being able to move in and, I mean, I was already here. <laughs> I was already here. I'd already even redecorated the property like just before I completed, like I got new furniture and changed my room and got fitted wardrobes and shelves and all these things. So 
I didn't even have that. Like, I feel like if, maybe if I waited to do that, maybe it would have felt a little bit more like, oh, okay, I've just got this new place. But I kind of did all of that already. So I didn't really have that same feeling um, that everyone probably gets when they get their first home because I was already in it. <laughs> so yeah, I think for me, that was a bit of a con just because I felt like I missed out on that maybe first time buyer feeling, I suppose, that you get when you get your first home and you've not lived there before. But I mean, I wouldn't change it. I'm still very grateful and I'm still excited. It was still a positive feeling to be like, yeah, I've done it. But yeah, I definitely think that, you know, I feel like I'll, when I buy my next property, like the next property that I buy probably won't be the property that I'll be living in. It will probably be an investment property. But the next property that I buy, that's my home home that I'll be moving into. I feel like that's when I'll get the opportunity to feel those feelings that I didn't get to feel this time around. So yeah, again, someone might not see that as a con, but for me, it was a bit like, uh, yeah, like, you know, obviously I was happy and, you know, even the little things like, because there, most people that would know me knew I was already living there, you don't get the things like housewarming or, I mean, I could have still did those things, I know. But it's just not the same. I've lived here four years. So yeah, doing a housewarming just wouldn't have felt right. Um, I did get one or two like, um, you know, congrats on new home cards, but it's just not the same as if it was like a brand new home that I hadn't lived in, I think. So I feel like I kind of missed out on that feeling. So guys, um, I think I've gone through pretty much all the cons I could think of. So the first pro I would say um, is being able to get a, in some cases, or in my case, I should say, a reasonably, um, not even reasonably, a very good quality property for a fraction of the price. Um, so obviously the council do do take a discount off of the market value and then they sell it to you for that amount. So that's the amount that you need to pay, basically. And yeah, so I, I, I would say that is like probably the biggest pro really, is that you're getting something that perhaps if you saw on the open market, it would have maybe been over your budget, but with the council discount, it brings it down to something more affordable for you. And on top of that, that, discount that they have taken off can actually still sit within the property as equity so you have a certain time period where the council says like if you sell it within x amount of years you've got to kind of repay a percentage of that equity or they will claw that back in the in the sale um but if you don't sell it for five years i mean i have no intention of selling it for five years god willing nothing forces me to um that equity will stay so that's kind of almost like free money I would say that's just already there in there and you know you hope as well that the property will grow up in value so you'll get even more equity on top of that equity that's already there that the council have effectively put in because of the discount that they've given so I would say that is a major pro um, but like I said obviously that is something that makes it attractive but you have to weigh up all the other costs you have to weigh up things like the major works over the next five years um, you know you have to consider whether or not the property could potentially go down in value have property prices fluctuated in your particular area there's so many things to weigh up so it's not going to always be as clean cut as how I've described it but in my case just because of where my property is located that's kind of how I've been able to determine that it is actually quite favourable to me or it, it was a favourable decision for me to make to invest in it so that was definitely say that is the first pro the second pro is that in some cases and I have to emphasize in some because this isn't something that applies to everybody but in I would say majority of cases as long as you meet the affordability requirements of your mortgage lender in some cases you can actually use that equity that I was just described in the previous pro so the discount the, the council has given you that can actually be offset as your deposit so in some cases you may not actually have to put any of your own funds towards the deposit of the property um, so that is obviously a, fan, a massive pro um, and it's a good pro in the sense that if you have been saving as if you were going to put a deposit down, which I would recommend that you do because like I said, not everybody meets the affordability criteria to actually take advantage of that option. Um, you can use that money for something else. You can use it for perhaps if you want to renovate the property, perhaps if you want to switch up the furniture, perhaps if you want to invest in another property like I do. Um, so, you know, there's it kind of puts you in a position where you've got that extra money to kind of do what you want with. But there is also the option of even if you don't necessarily need to put a deposit of your own, you could still add that money that you've saved if you want to obviously put more money into the property and reduce your overall monthly payments. 
Um, in my case, that was an option that I wanted to kind of take. However, I also did want to also like kind of leave cash because I mean, <laughs> but you know, it doesn't, it doesn't always work out like that for everyone. And some people still have to still put a deposit even with the discount, because like I said, it really boils down to your affordability. That is the main thing it boils down to. Another pro is that you have the opportunity to purchase somewhere that potentially it could be like your family home it could be a home that's got a lot of memories I mean for me this was my first flat that I'd moved into moving out of my mum's house so there's a lot of kind of history here there's a lot of significance for me so having the opportunity to buy that I saw that as a pro and others as well buying you know that might be your your parents home again that could be a pro like something that you can kind of treasure something that means a lot to you has significance and you now can own that I think can also be seen as a pro um but i think i did mention this in the con in terms of obviously when you're already living there you don't get that same buzz as when you buy it but it's still an achievement um and yeah if it's somewhere that means a lot to you there's i guess there's a beauty in knowing that you kind of now own that place so i would say that's a pro hey guys so those are my personal pros and cons of buying my council property um if you guys have any questions or if you have your own experiences with buying a council property and you have your own pros and cons please feel free to share them in the comments below i love engaging with you guys and it will be nice to hear other people's experiences and what you consider to be a pro and con of buying a council property um but yeah guys stay tuned for my next video please do like comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video